kicked off. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All right. Yeah. Good morning, Dave. Uh, what, what is, in the time you've been with Brandon Aubrey, is there something that's unique about him compared to other guys you've had? I mean, I know they all have special qualities, but yeah. is there anything you can point to with him? I mean, this is such an unusual. Yeah, it is unusual kind of production and story. I, I get it. Um, I think what maybe is a little bit unique about him that I that is maybe very different from a lot of other people is I think he has an incredibly just natural swing. You know, if you're looking at the physical part of it, it feels like it hasn't been messed with too much. You know, he's, it's a, he's a soccer player and it's kind of like a soccer swing. And there hasn't been, like I've said it before, too much over coaching or too much um, mechanical instruction. Is he just he's just free swinging and it's it's a cool look. And what's kind of interesting about it is not every kick is exactly the same. You know, sometimes his finish is just a little bit different based on different things, and sometimes he doesn't even know how or why it happens. But but it's all very fluid and natural. And so from a physical standpoint, I think that's a pretty unique thing about his swing. And then from a mental standpoint, he's the same. He's the same guy almost every day, which is not unusual, but I haven't ever felt him stressful in a big moment, you know, or overwhelmed by, you know, how we're doing. Um, I think he's got a lot of great attributes to be potentially a great kicker. Well, you describe it's almost like, you know, like a movie The Natural or whatever like yeah. that. Where guy, yeah. hey, when, you, when you have a player like that, this early in his career, you're always looking for some mechanical things to help, but you also don't want to intrude on what he's yeah. doing. So how do you balance what he has naturally yep. versus do you just lay off some things and go, unless it can actually help him down the road or it becomes an yeah. issue, I'm not going to bring this up? 100% I have not messed at all with anything that he has going. You know, we've worked really hard on the snap and the hold. And the timing of the operation, which has actually become incredible, because you know in the training camp we're looking at, you know we're one four zero, one three eight. We got to get it under one three zero, and I mean we're easily in the one two six, one two seven every time. So um, I'm very aware not to to mess with his approach in a swing, and I don't think you'll ever hear me or see me go down that road. I'm sure you know Brian anger and Brandon talked quite a bit, but Brian also knows, like, let this guy just keep going and let's not mess with the good thing we got going. Uh, John Todd Archer of the ESPN. Uh, Chris Boniel said today you were the only guy in the league that called him about about Brandon. What made yep. you want to reach out to Chris and, and, and to pick his brain? Obviously, he coached him in Birmingham. Yeah, that was the big thing. I, you know, I've known Chris for quite a while, and he was his coach in Birmingham. So when we first started looking at him, you know, right around the draft time, honestly, um, you know, there was a very interesting prospect with the Birmingham Stallions. You know, we went back and watched all of 2022, and that was all we had because there wasn't college or anything like that. And then we, we started with 2023 spring up to the point where, okay, now we're caught up on every game, and there's still about six games left in his season. Um, and I texted Brandon quite a bit, you know, just like, hey, man, you know, you look good, and I'm watching. You know, just keep on swinging and don't worry about nothing. You know, and he didn't know who I was, and um, I'm, I was learning who he was. And then, like I told you, you know, I snuck out there without him knowing for a game. I think it was June 3rd or something like that. And I got down on the field, and I remember texting CJ Goodwin. I took, took a picture of the field, and Brandon said, Here I am looking for a kicker, and it's hot as can be this day, anyways. Um, but then, he didn't know I was coming, and I kind of snuck out into the field and watched the warm-ups and um, got a chance to meet his family after the game. So it's kind of like back when I was in college, just doing a little recruiting. You know, you're doing a great job, man, and keep it up. You know, we're kind of looking for a kicker. You know, hope it can work out. Just, you know, stay healthy because you got a long season here and potentially long season coming up. And um, so I just stayed in touch with him. You know, sent him a couple of texts every week. Just like, you know, great job, man, great game. Keep it up, keep banging. Nothing, anything more than that. Um, and then right after the season ended, we were going to bring in a couple guys, you know, for a tryout, you know, with Will McClay and the whole crew. And we just decided we don't want him to go anywhere else potentially and try out, so let's just sign him. So we just did. 
was were you disappointed in that you weren't able to get one of the guys in the draft? I know you you're looking at the kickers and they went kind of maybe earlier than yeah. you guys had, had thought. Was yeah. there any disappointment that you weren't able to get one of those guys? No. Nope. I thought there were, you know, we had our eye on a couple of kickers and they got drafted so high that there wasn't a disappointment because it's like, well, we weren't going to go up there, you know, with, with what it cost to get them basically in the third round and early in the fourth. So it was kind of like, all right, well, what's the next answer? You know what I mean? And so Brandon, amongst many others, was it. You know, there's a lot of guys we were looking at and he just kind of stood out. And a big part of it, you know, to tell you the truth was in the USFL, they kick off from the 20 yard line and his kickoffs were phenomenal. You know, and the swing was the same. And I was sitting in the office with, with Coach Stu, my assistant, whenever it was, April, May. And we're watching this guy kick off. It's like, this guy is banging the ball, and he's not even trying. You know, he's kicking it from the 20-yard line. He's hitting the ball to the goal line. And it's just a really easy, like, gosh, he's not even trying. And the ball's jumping off his foot. So that was a big part of it, too. Then the field goals, you know, were, were, were natural and sweet. And um, it all kind of just kind of stood out more than, more than other guys. And so here we are. It's like, that happened fast, you know? I went from just introductions, a couple of text messages, you know, a, a kind of trying to be discreet visit, and here we are in December, and he's doing pretty good. Nick, Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. He said yesterday in the locker room that um, he feels like he could make a 70-yarder. I'm not going to ask if you think he would make it, but how nervous would you be if he was to trot out there for a 70-yarder? No, I, I wouldn't be nervous at all. I, I mean, at that point, I'm sure in his brain, it's like, well, hell, I'm just going to swing as hard as I can to see what happens, you know? But based on the 60-yarder, I would say 70 is in his range. I don't know if we would do that in the first quarter. <laughs> but I think if it was, you know, four seconds left in the half of the game, it's kind of like, okay, <laughs> you know. We were going to do that earlier in the season. I think it was 66 maybe. Was it New England that got us to kind of false start? I should look back, like, I wonder what would have happened on that kick if, you know, we didn't jump off sides and that thing went through. I don't know. Jamashow to the athletic. During that time when you were looking for him, like you mentioned, June, I mean, training camp is going to start not that far down the road. How much pressure were you feeling? Like, I got to find a kicker. We don't, we don't really have a kicker right now. Yeah, gosh, I do remember not feeling a lot of pressure. I don't know why. You know, I, I know we had Tristan already signed up, um, but I knew we had to, you know, find competition. And it just felt like um, to this guy we were looking at, probably going to be one of the guys to compete, you know, we'll see how he do. And there's obviously veterans still available if things didn't go very well, you know, through training camp. But um, I remember, arguably so, not feeling pressure to have to, like, find a guy or sign any guy. Um, it just felt like sometimes being patient was the right answer instead of jumping and signing somebody. And well, now we're locked into these guys. Um, sometimes. I don't know. I think being patient was, was a good answer for us, even though maybe it was hard. Like, gosh, you know, it is. It's, it's June 3rd or whatever the day I went out there was. They were playing um, Philadelphia. Yeah. You know, a little while ago, Mike McCarthy was in here, and um, he was giving you a lot of credit for the way that you have, you know, your system structured with the kickers, and it gives them a lot of confidence and things like that. Um, do you take any credit for where Brandon Aubrey is right now? No. No, absolutely not. Uh, like I said, I, I haven't really coached Brandon Aubrey. And I say that, you know, respectfully. So I, I, haven't, I haven't dabbled in anything with his, with his steps, his swing, his approach. I haven't, I haven't done anything. It's, it's been what does he need as far as the operation. And if you look at it, we talked about this last week. You know, we got Brian Anger off the street. You know, nobody wanted him, so we signed him to a one-year. Um, Trent got cut by the Raiders. We signed him a few days later because we needed one. Um, Brandon's here by some fate. So those guys work hard, you know, and we picked them up and we just made them feel like they're important because they are. And um, I think my job is to try to just breed confidence in them. Like, you know, banger, you're the best, man. You know, you're the, you're the best. And, and, I th and I think that it's true. It's, there's some bias, I get it. You know, and Trent, it's like Trent, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, their team lets you go. <laughs> You're really good, man. You are really good. And, and it's, he's proven that he is really damn good. So um, I think coaches, you know, shouldn't take credit for certain things when, when players are good players and they care a lot and they work hard. And um, chemistry is such a big thing on that that 
yeah, we're all in it together. I don't, I don't know another way to answer. Yeah. Uh, he's the athletic. Uh, John, when we talk to your guys about you, I, I think a lot of them bring up your, your character and, and stuff before even your coaching. I'm, I'm curious, what's the balance there and, and like, you know, how you treat other people? And I know a lot of times coaches can be, you know, for lack of a better term, like hard asses or whatever, and be really good at that. Or, you know, how do you kind of balance how, to, how you want to approach you as a person versus you as a coach? Yeah. Um, you should be my agent, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that about me, but um, I think um, I just have a, such a huge amount of respect for football players just from growing up in it. You know, I just admired him, the college football player, and later the pro football player. And there's just something really special and unique about a young man, you know, especially who's a pro and what they, what they do on a daily basis, you know. I remember when we were all 23, 24, 25, like, there's a lot of big responsibility with our players, with, whether it's providing for family or trying to create a career for themselves. Um, but also in our special teams meeting today, you know, we kind of finished up the game and I said, let me just, before you guys go, I got two minutes, I got to tell you a story. And I said, I read online, it was a couple days ago, that before I get into the story, I said, my hope for you guys is that um, you live a good life, you're healthy, you sleep well, you have good relationships, you know, you, you bond here in the, in the facility and your teammates become your friends for a long time. So I said, I was reading this article in National Geographic about a turtle named Jonathan who just turned 191 years old. He was born in 1832, this turtle. You know, I said, and he's got a veterinarian that says, um, there's a lot of life left in this turtle. They're looking at maybe this turtle living three centuries, which means over 200 years old. And he's a little bit blind, lost his sense of smell, but um, he has a huge appetite. 191-year-old turtle still has great libido, you know. Um, and I kind of just went off and just saying, you know, that's my hope is that, you know, you guys live well, man, and take care of your bodies and have good relationships. And if you're in a place right now where that's not the case, it's okay because kind of being in a hole is not permanent, you know. So anything that anybody has going on, which everybody does, but nobody's going to say it, you know, you're going to come out of it. It's going to be okay. So there's always some storytelling going on because we got a lot of meat and time, and we don't usually need all of it. Don't tell Coach I said that. <laughs> I don't know where I went with that. Sorry, I got way off tangent, but but it's fun to be in a in a professional meeting room, you know, with with the guys and. Um, Make it feel like, you know, we're all human beings sometimes, not just robotic X's and O's. Uh, and then on, on another note, uh, what's impressed you the most about the way Mike has uh, constructed his program here over the, over the course of four years? I know how long you've been with him and stuff. What's impressed you the most? I think the consistency and what happened this week, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, coach wasn't here, and I don't think anybody panicked. It was just, okay, this is. This is what we do on Wednesday at this time, Thursday at this time, and um, the beat just kept going on. And I texted the coach, I'm sure many others did, like, Coach, we missed you, man. I can't wait to get you back here soon. But we all got your back, and we all know what we're supposed to do. And so nothing changed. Nobody panicked. And what a great um, thing for our football team just to be able to just keep it going, you know, without, without any hiccups or interruptions, especially on a, on a week like, you know, a big game coming up. And it was – Kind of just business as usual, you know, but missing our big guy, you know. Hey, Dave Lockmer, Cowboys Radio. I, I do have a question, but do you think uh, Brian Kelly's watching that game last night saying, you mean we had that kid on our campus? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good call. I don't know. He might not even know that kid was on the campus until uh, now, yeah. I'll be talking to my guys. Uh, obviously, Aubrey's got the street going dirty straight. But Greg Zerline is second on the street list. I think he's got now 22. I think he hit three yesterday. He's only missed one on you. Yep. But my question is, how much pride and how closely do you follow the guys that have played for you before? Yeah, great question. Very closely. Zerline's been fantastic. And I text him all the time. And my wife texts his wife, like, you know, just great job. Just keep going, man. You're, you're this many years into it. And the highs and lows, and you're still here. And you're still doing great. And um, Greg's doing fantastic. I know, um, you know, send a text out to Johnny Hecker and Jake McQuaid and uh, all the guys that have coached over all the years. 
um, and take a ton of pride in their in their careers and their health and um, yeah that's a great question I'm glad you asked that because just because you know I'm not with those guys anymore doesn't mean forget about them kind of going back to you know you're, you're with people certain you know long enough you stay in touch with them and you hope for their success no doubt about it except when you play against them you know you want to you want to rush the punt and get after the snapper a bit. <laughs> when you're not going against them, yeah, you want the best for them, for sure. We'll go to Joe and finish with Nick. Yeah, Joe Boyd, Lone Star Live, going back to the search for Aubrey. How wide, of a cat, how wide of a net did you cast when searching for a kicker? And then how much kicker film did you watch? And what are you exactly looking for in kicker film? Because I feel like for the layperson watching, kicking highlights might not be the uh, most exciting. Yeah, it's not the most exciting, but, but there's definitely a lot of stuff you can get from it. We, we looked at as much as we could. We watched all the XFL tape, all the USFL tape. Um, we had myself and other scouts go to the, the ones in Southern California and Arizona where they hosted, you know, multiple kicker tryouts, guys that are on the street. Um, so I don't have a number for you, but I'm sure it was, I don't know, close to 100 of all the resources we could get our hands on with film. The best stuff is the game tape. So again, a credit to the XFL and USFL for having game tape where there's a rush and there's a snap and there's a hold compared to some of the just tryouts, you know, off the sticks. But I think um, amongst a whole building, we were, we cast a very wide net. And it was cool because you got to, you know, just take a clean slate and say, let's just try to figure out who's the best available guy, in our opinion, not, not history or not anything else. And um, that was kind of a fun process. Not stressful, but it was, it was challenging, but pretty fun. It took a while, but you guys were finally able to get some punts and part returns in uh, last mm -hmm. night. Uh, yeah. Talk about the operations of everything and then obviously the big punt. Yeah, we got one punt in. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the punt was fine. Um, we just, we just got to get there a little bit faster. You know, a good returner just kind of gobbled up some yards, but good pro, good punt, one punt. So it was kind of good to just get back on the field for a punt because we haven't been on the field for... Like seven yeah, I feel like I'm, literally probably almost three weeks, two weeks. Um, 18 possessions. Thanksgiving third quarter. Yeah, it felt like it. Yep. Well, um, gosh, but our offense has been fantastic. You know, when you only punt one time and you have no giveaways, you're probably winning the football game. You know, every single possession ends with a kick, a PAT, a field goal, or a punt. That's winning the football. Um, in the punt return, we haven't had many opportunities either. You know, my fault on the on the fake, just alerting Jalen Tolbert on their sideline for a non. Down, you know, a non-specialty gunner that was in the game. Um, and then the other one, you know, he hit, a, he hit a ball that wasn't returnable. And so we're still looking for work on punt return. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing kind of dry spell. But it's all been good because we haven't had a lot of punt returns because of a lot of takeaways and fourth down stops. And we haven't had a lot of punts just because the ball has been moving. So um, we're not complaining at all. But, but I told the guys, you know, today that at some point you're going to get a lot of work. I was with the Rams in 18 and we punted two times a game. And all of a sudden we get in the Super Bowl and we punt at nine. You know, so we just have to be prepared for those opportunities when all of a sudden there is a game where we have seven punt returns and maybe five or six punts that got to be ready to go. And we will. Right. Maybe 18 happened where you had a punter who did not get hurt, punted all year, and wasn't a qualifier because he didn't have enough punts. Have I ever had that? Yeah. No. In 18, no, we, we, had, a, we had just enough, but right now I don't think he does, huh? Yeah. We're okay. Keep keep the old rolling. We'll be ready. Thank you. All right. Thanks you guys.